The New York City subway system transits 4 million riders a day, and while it's not the world's easiest, my goal today is to break it down for first timers so you avoid all the mistakes I've made in the past. Let's go. This is probably my most requested video ever because so many tourists are intimidated by the subway, but you shouldn't be. And at the end of this, I'm gonna take you through a sample ride, so pay close attention. Simply put, a single ride on the New York City subway costs $275. The MTA recently made a proposal to raise the subway cost to $2 dollars and 90 cents a ride after Labor Day. Not official yet, but it would be the first fare increase in four years. Currently a seven day pass, $33 and a 30 day pass, 127 bucks. A big area that has given my viewers a lot of confusion is OmniPay. We are just going to break this down entirely. So for most of my viewers watching, if you have a credit card with contactless payment or a credit card saved to a wallet on your Android or iOS device, you can use OmniPay. You just tap and go. You don't need any special app downloaded for this. The only time you would be required to have a Metro card anymore would be if you're taking the air train at JFK airport. You would have to pay $8.25 plus a $1 fee for buying said Metro card. And essentially you've just bought a $9.25 souvenir as far as I'm concerned because you really don't need this. Now I've heard that they may have contactless payment enabled at the air train in the near future. So by the time you watch this video, if it's in a few years, you might not even need that Metro card, period. Now, if you are traveling with a family or a small group, pay attention to this because I get a lot of questions about how many swipes you can get with one card or how many taps you can get with one Omni device or credit card. And the answer is three extra. You can swipe once and then get three extra people on three different swipes before the card isn't available to be used anymore. So if you have more than four people, you either need two Metro cards or two different ways to pay with OmniTap. If you have small children, kids 44 inches or under ride for free. In fact, I didn't even realize this till I researched this video. I once saw a mom encourage her little daughter to run under the turnstile and I thought, hmm, what are they teaching these kids today? And now I realize because she's free. Let's talk unlimited cards and if you should get a seven day unlimited pass. Now this is kind of a tricky topic. Omni offers a seven day unlimited pass through their contactless payment. It's called fair capping. You can only do it on one device or card. Now if you tap 12 times with any Omni payment, you automatically get the rest of the rides for the week free, which sounds pretty straightforward, but this only works from Monday at 12 a.m. to Sunday at 11.59 p.m., which means if you're a tourist, and you're arriving on a Thursday and you're gonna be using the subway like crazy and you want the unlimited, Omni's probably not gonna make sense for you. So the bottom line is, unless your trip fully lines up with a Monday to a Sunday, if you need to go unlimited, buy separate cards for each member of your group. And special shout out to one of my viewers, Mark Finley, for pointing out how Omni Unlimited really isn't that great for tourists. Probably the best piece of advice I can give you on this video is to have Google Maps downloaded on your phone. Having a smartphone in general in this city is gonna make transportation 99% easier. Google Maps will tell you exactly what exit to take when you get to a new station. And something in the past that I've recommended is City Mapper. I don't use City Mapper as much anymore because I now live at a local station and City Mapper doesn't tell me on weekends when subways are skipping my stop. And that's somewhere where Google Maps is a lot stronger. So honestly, between the two, I use Google Maps a lot more now and you have to have that on your phone. It's just gonna save you so much hassle here. Whenever you're looking for a specific subway station, make sure that it is the exact one that you need. And I can't illustrate this point any better. We were filming this video and we had a lost tourist approach us and he thought that he was at the Spring Street six station. He was actually at the Spring Street CE station. So you have to not only know the name of your station, but what line you're taking. And don't get me started on the four 23rd Street stations or the three different Canal Street options. Same thing if you're meeting somebody, if you're meeting a friend at any station. Don't say I'm meeting at Canal. Say I'm meeting at the six train at Canal. Maybe give the corner as well. I'd like to thank the partner of today's video, Soundcore by Anchor because when you're riding the New York City subway, sometimes you just want to drown out the
noise. I've got the brand new Soundcore Liberty 4 NCs right here, and they look so sleek. But I'm all about performance, and no matter how loud it gets underground, their industry-leading noise-canceling system is going to have you enjoying your music or podcasts in peace. They reduce noise by up to 98.5%, which is a lifesaver after a long day exploring the city. Some stations are louder than others, and with a new adaptive active noise cancellation 2.0, they tailor to your ear canal and environment through real-time calculations, leveling up your journey. And the sound is studio quality. It's like switching on HD for your ears. If you're like me, you probably hate always charging devices, and the worry-free battery is so nice. Get 10 hours of playtime on a single charge and 50 hours of playtime with a charging case. Shrink the noise wherever you go with Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. See the link in the description to purchase your own pair. Now, if you're new to New York City, you have to realize that we have local and express trains. Local go to every single station where express is going to skip the local stops and go a little bit more quickly to some of the bigger stations. And some of the most common express stops you'll see all over the city, 59th, 42nd, 34th, and 14th streets. Here's a little tip for you. If you see people running down the stairs, they probably see that the subway just arrived. So if you're in a rush, you might wanna run too. For my tourists watching or spending most of their trip in Manhattan, when you look at the subway signs here, you're generally gonna see either uptown, meaning heading for Harlem, downtown, heading for financial district, and then you'll see another destination of Queens. But you really have to pay attention to the uptown and the downtown when you're looking at this. Every single station in the city has a board that tells you the timetables, and they are very accurate. So when I first moved to New York, this was not a thing at every station. I had to check by phone. Don't even need your phone to know when your train is coming and which side it's coming on as well. Let's discuss entering and exiting stations and this could be a little bit tricky if you're not overwhelmed already. One thing to look for is many smaller stations have these globes here. That's how you know a subway entrance is there. Some huge stations you can just tell by the exterior but any of the smaller ones this is your clue from far away. Now this is where sometimes even New Yorkers will mess up if they race into a station without checking. If the sign for the subway only says uptown it's usually a small or local station you'll see this you can only enter in one direction meaning if you enter in the downtown spot and you want to go uptown you have a few options one cut your losses exit cross the street swipe again Two, take the subway one stop and hope that the next station has an underpass or a way to connect going the opposite direction. Three, you can ask the station attendant nicely to let you go. There's one other thing you could see. It might say downtown, uptown, and underpass, meaning you can go to the downtown side and there's gonna be a staircase leading to the uptown side. Now in this example here, when it doesn't say downtown, uptown, or underpass, it means that you can go both uptown and downtown from this 57th Street station. Another tip for you is that these subway stations are super, super hot in the summer. So if you don't have to spend that much time down here, the timetables on Google Maps are very accurate. So maybe at about the five minute mark, I would consider heading in because I have had some awful experiences. Heat of the summer, humidity, save time, stay above ground as long as possible. Let's talk transferring within stations. Now in almost every instance, transferring is free inside of a station. This is not like Tokyo where you have to swipe again and pay twice. You can transfer multiple times within the subway system and not have to pay more than $275. We're gonna talk some safety tips right now and the zebra board, also known as the indication board behind me, is a big one. Let's say you're riding the subway by yourself late at night. You wanna make sure you're sitting in the same car as the conductor. Find this indication board. That is where the conductor will be because they always point at it when they stop at a station. An added bonus with this, you know where the conductor is if you have questions like, is this train going to a certain spot? Very useful. When the train comes, don't stand in front of the door for your own safety because you're gonna get some angry New Yorkers cursing at you for blocking their path. Stand back, let them go, and then board the subway. When you're riding on any subway car, don't make eye contact with strangers. Like the New York City subway, it's not the friendliest place. Just mind your own business and you should be okay. If you do witness erratic behavior, you'll see a lot of other New Yorkers doing this. At the next station, exit, 
and go to another subway car. I've even had to do this a handful of times in my 12 years living in the city. Here's one you learn the hard way. If you ever board a subway car and it's completely empty, there's probably a reason for it. You'll find out why. I literally saw somebody doing this today on my way to this shoot. Don't stop in the middle of a busy path like this to check your subway directions. Now, luckily no one's behind me right now, but this lady actually caused a little bit of a traffic jam as everybody had to swerve around her for your own safety to try not to get run over or cursed at. Don't do that. I get a lot of questions about accessibility and New York City. I hate to say it, but the New York City subway needs a lot of work when it comes to being handicapped accessible. So for example, in Manhattan, only 36 of 147 stations are wheelchair accessible. And when it comes to elevators, most major stations have them, but they smell, well, I can't think of the right word. Use your imagination, they smell terrible. And now we're gonna put all this knowledge to the test. We're gonna do a sample ride from here in Greenwich Village, uptown to Carnegie Diner and Cafe. Follow along. I always would recommend picking the route that does not have any transfers, especially if you're new here. We're gonna take the F train. We found the right entrance, West 4th, Washington Square, looking for the F train. We're not looking for the orange line, we're just looking for the F to make sure that letter is here. It is here, and we're gonna go down. We got two choices here, Uptown, Queens, F. So we're gonna go this way. The other side says Downtown. We're not going downtown. And don't get confused by this Downtown Brooklyn ACE stuff. That's to go to the other side. Stick to your letters. Always follow the signs with your letter. Another reminder, Uptown, F train, here. And just in case you missed it the last three times, F train, this direction, FM, BD on the left, that's express. We're looking for the local train. This train just passed, F and the M. This is the M train, we don't want this one. Don't just hop onto the first train you see. Make sure it's the one you're actually trying to take. We have another uptown express train on the other track, also not taking that. Remember, we are not looking for the color, we are looking for the exact letter here, F. Now this is telling me the next train is now 1257, and we look up at the board, it's confirming it. Remember what I said? All the subway stations now have boards that tell you pretty accurate timetables. You look up, it points in the direction of the F train. This side, arriving now. F train's here, let the people exit. They always announce the next stop. They just said it's 14th Street, so we know that it's heading uptown. You can also check up there to make sure you're going in the right direction by the different stops listed. We made it to 57th Street, now we have to find the right exit. We're looking for 6th Ave and 57th. Most of the time, if you exit at the wrong place, it's not a big deal. You're still gonna be pretty close to where you have to be, but just save yourself the trouble. And there it is, across the street. Now that you know the subway like a pro, visiting New York City requires a lot of street smarts. In this video, we tell you what tourist traps, scams, and rip-offs to avoid. Make sure to watch this next.